bestseller. It's, I mean, really, if you were to say, like, okay, what's a children's book that I might like? It would be the first thing to come off my tongue. And so watching this, I, I was just so happy they were doing it. Scorsese's doing it. Only person I could have thought could have been just as good, if maybe better, would have been Jeannot. Is that what I'm saying? Jeannet. Right? Jeannet, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, mm-hmm. obviously right from the beginning because it's in in France yeah. and, and in Paris. Mm-hmm. And there's such a heavy theme of that throughout, that, that sort of like... Yeah. 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 Well, a lot has to do with the cinematography, <laughs> yeah. too. You yeah. can't help but it's, think about it's, that It's guy. breathtaking. And um, the thing is, like, outside of, like, some of the bits with Sasha Baron Cohen, the movie is extremely faithful to the book. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, you know... As much as you give Scorsese, you know, credit for writing a love letter to old cinema, it was Selznick doing it first, right. you know, in, in his book. But, I mean, the book is all in black and white. It's all these fantastic pencil drawings done very cinematically. Scorsese takes it and enriches it. It's almost like a tenant black and white photograph. But, man, the imagination, the, the shots. And yeah. this here's a movie that uses 3D the way it should be used. Oh, huge the way am- it's all throughout. Like, do, do not see this movie in 2D. Huge you, amount you have of to credit see it in 3D. to Scorsese, who this is his first 3D film, of really taking his time to get here because he makes a film that, you're absolutely right, was made to be in 3D. I mean, the opening sequence when the sh- camera is just zooming through this train station, yeah. mm-hmm. my stomach was in my throat watching it. Oh, you yeah. can yeah. feel the smoke as it passes you oh, by yeah. everywhere. Yeah, there's absolutely no That way. was me. <laughs> smoking a joint. <laughs> That's probably why I thought this was going nowhere. It's like, Chipotle before you came over. Come on, dude. Get to the 3D shit. I thought this was Harold and Kumar. <laughs> <laughs> Bought the now, wrong ticket. Now, now, one thing I will say, co-host, I'm, you know what? What you say about it slowing down, it's absolutely true. I was, I was starting to get nervous because I was like, you know what? It's almost like, like maybe the book wasn't long enough and he's just slowing down trying to pad it out. But then the way he to- so totally realizes the last half of it was just like, all right, maybe, you know what, this just, it's not, maybe it's not just that it, it's slow, it's just different. It's a, it just has such a European feel to it, mm-hmm. as it as well it should. Sure. That I was just like, you know what, this is, normally for me, I'd slam a movie for having yeah, a you slow would. pace like that. Oh, I, yeah. I, I'm like, I don't tolerate that shit. I, I, cause, cause <laughs> while I was sitting there, I was, I was thinking about you going, I bet you he's ready to leave. I bet you anything well, Leon's ready to go. I, I mean, the thing was, like, no, I might have been, but... There were so many great things going on. I was like, wow, I'm in conflict with myself because part of me yeah. wants to get mad, but <laughs> it's just beautiful and, and it's working these things out. It's and taking then, its sweet time. It's taking its sweet to time. To get to where you know. It, obviously, it's going somewhere, but by God, it's belaboring the point for yeah. a while. Mm-hmm. And if it's not for Scorsese's just jaw-dropping cinematography, like the, the, the visuals and the use of 3D all throughout, which make you go, I mean, constantly surprising, then you would have abandoned it. Before true, that. true. But, and, and it makes me go like, you know, Matt, maybe this is just not a movie for a mainstream audience. And I'm just, sure. I'm, I'm telling you guys that this is a wonderful film, but if you get there, you're like, <sighs> okay, it, may, it, yeah. it might not be your thing. Because they're selling it. They're selling it like a uh, uh, Harry Potter film. A film right. to take yeah. your kids to. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And, it, it, you know, slightly older kids. Yeah, and kids <laughs> maybe who are thirty-five year old kids who don't have ADD <laughs> yeah. even slightly. Yeah, for real. Sure. If, if you even suspect your kid is hyper, this is not. Oh, going it's on one no of those form. films. Like it, it reminds me of something like Chocolate too. Something like yes. that. That's a fairy tale for adults. A- absolutely. You know, I mean, in many ways, that's what we're dealing with here. It's like ostensibly for kids on the outside, but really, this is for grown-ups and hardcore cinephiles and. The problem is, is the marketing department doesn't get that at, right. at all. And they're not they, – even if they do, they don't care. They're hoping that that first weekend tickets where everybody wants to bring their kids in to yeah. see, you yeah. know, hey, it's got snow. It's a Christmas yeah. film. <laughs> yeah. well, I, can see, I can see the guys at the studio going, we need to market this film to Cyrus. And there's a guy, no, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, but he's gonna see it anyway. Yeah. Well, we say, well, it was made for Cyrus. Yeah, well, Cyrus ain't paying for the studio. Yeah. We got to get the non Cyruses in here. Look, but they're just gonna be pissed off. Fuck them. Let them be yeah. mad. L- as long as we get there ten fifty, they can be as mad as they want to be. God damn, yeah, it's yeah, point, Cyrus has seen every Nicholas Sparks movie. You think he wanted to see any Nicholas Sparks movie? No, but he saw him. He's damn sure gonna see this, regardless of how we sell it. And they'd be right. I am over. The moon to see Ben Kingsley in a good movie for <laughs> it's been a long ass time. Oh, the sexy beast. 
That's not, that was you know a long, long time ago. I know, but I just want to point that <laughs> yeah. out. Okay. It wasn't that long. I, I mean, I, I, it's I thought the, you were going to do something. No, no, no. <laughs> whenever I try to quote Ben Kingsley, I'm still going, no, 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 no. <laughs> From Sexy Beats, right. I'm like, well, this guy make another movie. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I can quote. Oh, he has. Uh, yeah, just not one you want to quote. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's, it's good to see him in it because I was curious as to who they were going to get to play uh, George, and he, and he was perfect for, mm-hmm. I, for the role. I thought he was great as soon as they got into that second part because, like I said, said yeah. all they were giving me was he was just a grumpy old guy who was always giving this poor orphan kid shit so well, I, well, i'm like to... I, I did you just didn't like him yeah oh, oh absolutely we're well, not it, supposed to it, yes, it is yeah. which you know, I, get, yeah. I guess i suppose harry potter-ish or dickensian in mm-hmm. the way you start with an orphan kid who just has the world taking a big shit on him at mm-hmm. every turn yeah and and then the, yeah that whole thing that that george does when they meet it's just like Man, fuck you, old man. <laughs> I, I, I hate you. I kept thinking as I was watching it, it was like this had to be set like earlier in time. It couldn't be like a more modern because otherwise everyone would be going, Jesus Christ, kid, you stink. <laughs> He's living in a clock tower. There, there ain't no showers. Yeah. But back then, not as many showers. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> what the fuck, Quasimodo? Yeah. <laughs> they, they have dial soap where you It's live. like, I took a shower last week. I'm fine. Uh, yeah, you know what? It's funny, though. I, th- I keep thinking about this and going that my biggest criticism seems to be like what you referred to earlier about uh, Janae and feeling influenced like, of that, that Scorsese felt that a lot. And fe- and a lot of the little subplots in here with like Sasha Baron Cohen and Emily Mortimer and uh, oh god I can't remember who it is. There's people thing. from the Harry Potter yeah, movies. Chris, mm-hmm. Yeah, the Christopher Lee. Uh, you know, there's all these Uncle Dudley. Little, and, yeah, um... uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> all these little subplots. They just get in the way. They kind of they really do things out, yeah. but they feel like he watched Amelie and went, "Oh, I love all those little tiny right. mini stories." It's like yes, those stories that they wrap up in like thirty seconds, yeah. and, and, and you know what, and yeah. finish, and, yeah. and, and that was another part. Uh, I'm glad you said that because that's exactly what I was thinking too. I was like, "Man, Scorsese, you cannot, you cannot do your, you know, Amelie Junior version <laughs> yeah. right now because I can, I can see through it. You, you're better than this uh, because I was wondering where all those like side subplots." were going to go and they really didn't go anywhere besides just to introduce you to these quirky characters like Amelie yeah. but the Amelie is such a perfect film and they're so masterful at making those side characters interesting without them not doing a lot where I think he tried to attempt that here and he, and he failed you yeah know? no no, no. I, I, I agree with you I, I felt like he was as a director going I, I, it feels like this period of pair should be injected with mm-hmm. that sort of jeune magic and that part didn't really work it, it, it really was, a, was just like quoi. Le, <laughs> nice you like that one <laughs> sir I saw <laughs> Salute you. That was, that was, I feel like you should get a special medal for that. Yeah. I'm not sure I'm even up to that. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah it, it didn't really work here. It just it felt like what it was, an attempt to stretch it out and make the film longer by having these little characters. But they don't really add up to much at all, except no. for little things, obstacles to place in the kid's way along the way. Some of them aren't even that. They're just there because... Fuck it, why not? Yeah, yeah. There. And, yeah. And, and for the last scene, maybe, I guess. Yeah, mm-hmm. to add co- a little bit of color. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's color that just feels unnecessary because you want it to move along. Yeah. Yeah, all right, do. so with all that being said, I... I I think that I forgive this film a lot based on all the stuff that it does so phenomenally well. And it really does do a lot phenomenally well. Like I said, the cinematography, the use of 3D, which is oh, some of the best we've ever seen. Yeah. I, I can think I can mm-hmm. safely say. Well, there's um, a scene where um, Sasha Baron Cohen is getting in and little uh, Hugo's face and as you're there watching it in 3D, his face is almost literally coming off the screen yeah. <laughs> right at you. You are backing uh, up yeah. into your seat. Like, oh, God. I was like, you know what? I've seen a lot of 3D, and I've never seen that. And yeah. that is impressive. Yeah. Right. Where was that in Bruno? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. you didn't want that in Bruno. Yeah, I did not want the 3D stuff in your face in Bruno. I didn't. <laughs> uh, after your gender confusion thing, I'm not sure yeah. about that. <laughs> <laughs> so confused. <laughs> Uh, but you know, like I said, you got to take all this stuff and measure. It and and I still did like the first half. I just wondered at some point where was it going. And once it showed me, I went, "Okay, you got me." And I think overall, with everything said, I'm still going to give this a, a low full price. I think this is a film that I'm going to enjoy a lot more the second time when I really understand what it is altogether. Yeah. And I felt like even so, as I was thinking back before it was even over, there was lots of little bits and pieces here and there that were references to stuff from classic early silent films that was like oh 
I need to watch it again just with an eye specifically for stuff from like Harold Lloyd films and Buster Keaton films yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, this, this is what's tearing me apart because like as soon as that second uh, part started, at least the, the, the interesting part, I was like, wow, this is like – uh, if they would have cut down a, a good part of that first part, this would have been a full price for me. But I have to say that, you know, I was in the theater just just wondering for the first hour, like, where is this fucking going? So I have to give it a rental, honestly. I mean, as beautiful as it is, I was even skirting around matinee. But I mean, just thinking how I was in that theater. Uh, yeah, I, I can see a lot of people who probably don't even have my patience, you know, uh, to sit through a movie like this and go, yeah, I, it, it makes more sense being a rental. But even, it's a, it's a beautiful film to look at. But I mean, honestly, I can't I can't give it points for it just being beautiful because it should have won me over as soon as I got in there, you know. Okay. Uh. Well, I I guess I tend to be more in this in the Cyrus camp, but but I understand where you're coming from. Mm-hmm. I mean. You know, with what you're saying, it makes me go like, wow, how would I recommend this to somebody? Because I feel like if I was to tell somebody, I, I might say like, well, it's probably a matinee for you. So contextual for the person. It, yeah. it, re- it really is. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I have a, a history with the book itself. But just looking at just just how amazing what was done with it. And, and um, you know, I, I do wish in the first half they could have cut those characters because I, I think I think that could have just made all the difference in the world is cutting out the, mm. the side characters. And I understand there's a need to kind of distract from the main story a little bit, but maybe that was too much just in how it padded things out. But what it delivers in the second half is just so amazing and so worth it to stick through. And and just the fact that it would show me things visually. I mean, we see so many movies that even when we like them, They've they've still done something that another movie has done. Maybe they do it better, but it's still you've seen it before. And here I was seeing some things like, wow, have not seen this. Yeah, and I, you know that big ups for me with that. And uh, yeah, it it won me over in a way to where I'm giving it points where another movie I might not give points. So yeah, it's it's a low full price for me. You know, I I feel like uh, I feel like I ruined this for you early on by drawing Terminator comparisons. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like we watch this this automaton thing is kind of creepy. And, it really and is. Even yeah. like past the point where it was like we know what it is and what its point is. Every time it focuses on its weird, creepy little black eyed face, I'm picturing like <laughs> the ring or something. Like I don't know. Yeah. It's just there's something like just. You keep waiting for it to turn I, I, its head towards it, him and go, it, it, and now yeah. humanity must I, die. Yeah, I'm have, almost, I'm all, well, I was almost, I was waiting for that John Carpenter music to start playing because it's just a, <laughs> a faceless kind of like just blank stare, and I'm just waiting for him to turn around, and look at that kid, and hold a knife up, like fucking, it's like a robot Michael Myers, a ten year old boy. Oh, I, I, I just figured like the eyes would turn red, like an eye robot, where you go like, oh, now it's bad. Oh yeah, <laughs> bad robot. You just want to see that thing jump around and do something. <laughs> <laughs> 